Hey everyone, it's Scott Roberts and Kent Martz here. And uh, uh, last, last time we were on, we talked about the National Geographic 114 Star App Telescope. Let's take a quick look. I have looked at the directions, yeah. which I advise everybody to do sure. before you try and tackle anything. Look at the directions two or three times. Okay. So we're going to do that here. Let's we go. go ahead, Scott. You want to start pulling stuff out? Yeah. So we've got the altitude bearings here, right and left. And now we've got the components of the base. And packed right in here is a little pack with all the screws and stuff we're going to need. Right. And this looks like a lazy Susan, but this is actually the bottom plate. Well, it, it is a lazy Susan, Scott. <laughs> You well, not lazy because it's going to get a lot of work as you search for things also, up in the sky. Also, this box right here that has um, the eyepiece, the finder scope, an extension tube, uh, a couple of eye other piece pieces, holder. eye piece holder, things like that yeah. we're going to need as well. Instruction manual and a warranty card. And when you buy this, you definitely want to read. So, Scott, we're going to need tools for this. The tools you're going to need, Phillips head screwdriver, a two millimeter hex or Allen wrench and a crescent wrench, okay? Those are the tools that we're gonna need to put this together. So Scott, crack in to the directions. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Okay. Back here behind us. So we've identified that we have all the parts. Oh, yep, they screw in. Right. And that's what the Phillips head is for. How many astronomers does it take to put together a telescope? Oh, you could do it by yourself. <laughs> you could. And after you watch this video, you'll definitely be able to do it by yourself. That's right. And we're going to go ahead and put them all in. Yeah. And looks like we're back. So, that was the video that we were going to show now. <laughs> That's right. As opposed that's okay. To the, as that's opposed okay. to the 114. That's okay. We're going to show you how to assemble. What we're showing is the base, uh, the uh, assembly of the base of the 8-inch uh, First Light Dobsonian Telescope. But uh, let's go ahead and, and show the rest of this, so, okay? Yep. So, so we have the, right over here is what we put, what we put together on the video. Right, right there is put together. These two rocker arms were in the box with the base. So why don't you go ahead and unwrap those real quick. Yeah. I'm going to move this base down. Yeah. Okay, and so I'll, we have more. I'll get my pocket knife out so we can cut things open. And we'd already cut that one open when we realized we didn't want to here. So get this open. So, so these are yes. uh, the altitude arms that we'll use to put on the telescope. We'll show you more about these here in just a minute. Now I'm going to open up this box, being very careful not to cut myself using a knife. And I'm not trying to poke through real far either because you don't want to poke through here and cut something inside or put a scratch. So you just want to go in just a little bit. Let me kind of pause, Scott. All right. There we go. Put my knife up because I don't think we'll need my knife. Oh, going to need my knife again. You're going to need your knife again. So our telescopes come boxed in really good cardboard. Here, let's show them. It, they are double boxed. Yeah, double. So. Let's just turn on its side. Let me go in front. There we go. Yep. So these are really substantial cardboard we use. We want it to arrive safely when it arrives to your house. Okay, put my knife up. And I'll just operate from in front. So I'm gonna move her back around to the back. And out comes this big old tube. Now, normally, I'd be doing this on the floor, but we're doing it on a table so it films better, right? So it comes with styrofoam, and it comes in this big old tube. Hey, Noah, would you come grab this box for us, please? Just take that off the table. There you go. And you might bring me the foam back because there's probably a couple of parts that we need in the foam. 
Is there nothing there? Okay. So Scott has stepped off camera. He had to take care of something all of a sudden. So I'm just on my own here. Comes in this substantial yep. bag to help. Not, to not completely alone. Mm -hmm. There you go. So I'm going to lift it up, Scott. Yep. There you go. Pull the bag okay. out. As you can see, it also comes wrapped up in, in tissue. This, this white tissue paper to help protect it. So we're going to unscrew these rings right here. Yeah, give me that. And I don't want to let go of the telescope because I do not want it to fall. It's probably better if you Do put this floor. telescope on the floor, which I, I we're going to do here in a yeah, second. So I said we gonna... couldn't do this really to make it on the floor and show what's going on. So I'm just going to pull the paper off to re reveal that beautiful white tube right there. I'm going to keep a hold of this. All There's right. all the paper. Okay. Now I'm going to lay it on its side. There we go. Comes up a little bit better. There we go, right there. All right. So now we need to put the, the rings back on. I'm gonna lift this up, Scott, and let you. Okay. Now take note of something here. Take note of where the focuser is and these rings are. Okay. Um, because uh, when we put on the. Um, About like that. When we put on the altitude arms, the rocker arms, yeah, you want the eyepiece to be up, and we're going to put the rocker arms right here. And yeah, Mike, your your Mike, can't oh. your yeah, it's going to be bumping into the. Um, my middle name's Michael, so. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Okay, you didn't know that. Lift it up again. Okay, and just kind of have those cradle rings on loose. Because we're going to have to move them here in just a second. So here these are, Scott. There you go. Now then, there's a couple of things to know about this. These are not the same, right? They look the same, but they're not the same. Mm -hmm. They right? have this piece right here. Yeah, this piece right here, and they also and have a little guide to yeah. keep it all square. Mm -hmm. So, the nose piece, I'm consulting my uh, directions, I've read them a couple of times just to make sure I understand, the nose pieces go on the side away from the focuser, okay? It's just like, like that. that, just like that. So, grab that, open up our bag of goodies. You notice there's two holes here, and we're going to move these cradle rings. Also, so that we get to the center of gravity of the tube assembly. I was looking for these, and they were right in front of me. So, on, if, on the video that we just showed you, these rings come, or these knobs come, uh, embedded in the pieces of plastic inside of the uh, base box. Yeah, embedded in the foam. Yeah, so you in have to the pull corners. these out. And I've had people before, couldn't find them, they didn't notice them. It's not obvious, but they're... They're right there, so. Right. And it's just held on with a rubber band, the plastic sleeves it comes in to protect them during shipping. Now, something else you notice about these bearings is that they are, they've got a surface on it. It feels like it's a rough pebbles and stuff, but they are the, uh, when they rub up against the Teflon pads, it makes the right kind of stiction, uh, but also the right kind of smoothness for getting a nice adjustment in altitude. All right, so here you go. Okay. I just don't want to let go of the telescope and roll off. You don't want to let go of it? Okay. Not really. All right. There you go. Yeah, I'm right-handed. Yeah. You want to get you got it. There we go. So this is why you leave them loose, because we're going to move this one. Let me lift it up for you. Let you scoot it forward. Go really fo loose. Here we go. There we go. And here's that. Just uh, slide it till we get the hole lined up. There it goes. I felt it go in. 
Now, if you feel any tension on these knobs at all, then you know, back out. Don't cross-thread these things, okay? Yeah, uh, if you feel any tension on any screws, if in doubt, back it out, all right? Get it out of there and start over. So you want to lift that up for me, Scott? Yeah. So this is going to require Scott to do a little bit here, and I'm making sure. Yeah, let's just turn it around. Uh, okay, do it sideways. Otherwise, it it's just completely yeah, invisible. Invisible, what guys. I'm doing. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Let's just do it like that, right there. All right, so I've got it. Again, making sure the nose, okay. this piece is to the back. Scott's going to lift it up, roll it towards you. I'm going to get that in there. Goes in nice and smooth. Nothing. Now, this one should line yeah. up because. We got it lined up with that ring on that side. So now we can tighten these down real quick and get those on there good and tight. I'm going to go ahead and. All right, now let's just see. You want to tighten yours down, Scott? Well, uh, what I want to see before we tighten them down, are we even in the center of gravity? Uh, probably not. Probably so need you can tell that. Just let go of it. You can see we're a little tail yep. heavy. Yep. But what we have not put on either is the finder or the eyepiece, and that's, that's going to make it a little bit more nose heavy. So we'll probably go ahead and put it on right now and then adjust it in the cradle. Yeah, we'll okay. adjust it later. All right, okay. So, no, you want to come over and help with the table real quick. This is the only way we can figure out to do this was just at this point move the whole table out of the way. Excuse me, Scott. We've not rehearsed this at all, <laughs> as you can probably tell. So, all right. So here's right, the I'll base. Pull that base back. About right there, about well, where the table. Maybe was. a little bit more. Okay. A little bit more, all the way to the back as far as we can. Okay. All right. And now we're just going to set it down in those curved arms. Help, and we don't we don't have the tube tight, so it's going to slide all the way down. Yeah. Okay, but if you pull it like that, and I'll hold on to it, it's so about right slide. there. Now we're going to tighten these up. And if you have a balance problem, you can just slide these in and out, right? Mm -hmm. And get it to where it balances for you. And you don't have to get those down super tight. You just want them tight enough, the tube's not going to move. So here we go. Right. So we don't need to. And Scott, we still these don't are have other it. things that you want to take, you want to keep. We still don't have it quite right, Scott. Tell you how the telescope assembled. We don't have it quite right because we've got to move it a little bit more because it well, won't you clear. also don't have the other stuff on it. So just go ahead and it won't clear the base. It won't stand up straight. I see. That might do it right there. So you should be able to. Oh right, this has to go. Show them that. Yeah. Okay. This has to clear. That bottom has to clear this board. And there we go. We just cleared it. So there we go. Okay. I'm going to take the lens cap off. It's always hard to get the lens cap off, off the first couple of times. There we go. This is the 8-inch first light Dobsonian telescope. All right. It's a beautiful scope, as you can see. has a single-speed focuser, but we do have a 10-to-1 uh, reduction gear. This is an accessory that you can order to put on it as well. It comes with... A focuser that can allow either two inch eyepieces or inch and a quarter eyepieces with mm -hmm. the adapter. All right, and right here, tighten this down. This has two places where you can put a finder scope. So it, you can put it in the best place for how you're viewing, right? There's, it's going to be in there somewhere. All right. So this finder scope comes, we're going to show you the finder scope, the red dot finder that comes stock with this telescope. There it is right there. Okay. So the red, th this red dot finder has an uh, on and off uh, adjustment right here on the bottom. And this is a red dot. It just puts a red dot on this little piece of plastic. It's right. not a laser shooting up in the sky. It's just a red dot. And so a red dot works by shining a red dot against a lens here. And when you look through it, you keep both eyes open, you will see what looks like a red dot against the sky, okay? Right. But again, it's not a laser, so you don't have to worry about that. 
Um, there is a little battery uh, that's in here. So if we can zoom in on, on the red dot. And while he's doing that, I'm over here unscrewing the two screws that'll hold that into the finder base. Yeah. How does that look? We can switch to the camera two here so that we can see. There we go. Okay. Now you can see the on-off switch. And as you turn this and, and, and turn it up, uh, the red dot gets brighter. And you may need it to be brighter if you're observing in suburban environments. If you're out where it's really dark and you can see the Milky Way, you're going to turn this way, way down. So you can just see the, start to see the red dot, which is fine. Uh, there's an adjustment here. And there is an adjustment in the back. So you move the red dot up and down and yep. left and right. Yeah, yeah. Right? Right. So it goes up and down, left and right. And we'll and, talk, and, and how do you get it aligned with the telescope, Scott? Well, let's, okay. and let me finish here. Uh, we have a battery here that's protected by a piece of red plastic. You just pull that out, and now it's contacted. And it can come on. Yeah. Because we ship it with that plastic so it doesn't turn on inadvertently and arrive with a dead battery. Dead battery, exactly, house. exactly. Right. These use like uh, the large, you know, uh, dime size, um, uh, uh, flat battery, you know, the round battery. Like a watch battery. Yeah. Yeah. And then that slide, you can go ahead and slide that. I have it set up for this side. Oh, okay. So this literally slides into this base, and you have two screws, you'll tighten it down, and... And away you go. And away you go. Now it's attached to the telescope. Right. Now this is a special finder base right here, Scott. Mm -hmm. This is the hybrid two-in-one, and it comes with two of them, one on each side, this takes either the standard Explore Scientific uh, Mead foot or another style called a Mini Vixen Dovetail. So Which can take a lot of different most viewfinders. Of, most viewfinders. Most, our, our brand, other people's brands. Yeah. It'll take, this foot will take yeah. almost all the finder scope bases right. out there. So if you have one and, already, and you could You could you have two it. finders attached to your scope. You could have right. a red dot and an optical finder, mm -hmm. or you can put a reflex sight, which we'll talk about mm -hmm. here in a second, which is optional. Um, but it's a very versatile telescope. You've got, again, professional level uh, uh, adjustments for your focuser. It's a, um, it's a rack and pinion focuser. Yeah. Very smooth, very responsive. Yeah. Just really nice focuser. Yeah. And then the Dobsonian itself is very smooth and adjustable. And the way you move it around is just literally by pushing it and tilting it. So it's a real organic way to observe the universe. It's very, you look in the eyepiece, and, and I do a lot of outreach, and I use Dobsonian telescopes, and people say, I'll say, is it starting to move out of the field of view? And yeah. I'll say, yeah. They'll say, yeah. And I said, well, let's grab a hold of it, put your, put your hand right here, and put your hand right here, and just move the telescope. Right. And they'll go like that, and oh, wrong way. And so they'll move it this way, and now, just like that, they have, know how to operate the telescope, and I don't have to tell them anymore while yeah, they're sitting there. They, uh, just like that, a they young understand. kid can operate this telescope. Yeah, absolutely. So, in fact, you'll see that uh, the height of this is, is set up so that even a young person, very young person, could operate it. Uh, uh, now, on this particular type of design as well, you can loosen these cradle rings, and you can turn the focuser to be whatever focus height Focus or height that you angle. need it, or angle. If okay. you want it over here, you can put it over here. If you want you it over, over there, there, exactly. You just loosen those, so. turn it, and put it over there. Right? Right. Oh, so talk about how we get the red dot lined Go up ahead. with the telescope. Go okay, ahead. I'll you do it. it. All right, so let's talk about eyepieces first real quick. Because to do that is going to require an eyepiece. So we have a... Which one is that? Let's not use that one. Okay, so we're going to use this inch and a quarter eyepiece. And this is an 82 degree, 85 series eyepiece. Yep. And these eyepieces are sold separately. Right. They're waterproof, yep. Yep. Uh, which means they're fog proof. They're purged with argon gas. Right. And don't take them apart. Don't unscrew that. You hear a little hiss, and now you've ruined Yeah, they're the waterproof. So you, wanna, you don't want to be taking stuff apart like that. So I'm going to simply... Um, 
Put so also there, you know, the 82 degree eyepieces, by the way, are some of our premium eyepieces. Uh, they give a super wide field of view, very comfortable to use, but also a very decent eyepiece, uh, very high quality is our 52 degree series, which you'll see right. uh, featured here. So Okay, so if I'm going to align the red dot to the telescope, I have to point the telescope at something. And I'm going to pick the farthest away thing I can see from where I am. A tree a couple hundred yards away, miles are better than yards, yards are better than feet. So half a mile, quarter of a mile, three or four hundred yards, but if it's a top of a unique tree. Or meters and kilometers. Yeah, meters and kilometers, <laughs> right. exactly. So if you want to use it like a radio tower that's five miles or eight kilometers away, you can do that. And you simply do this. You just find that by moving the telescope until it's in the center of your eyepiece, right? Focus it up. It's focus all going to be out of yeah. focus. We're going to focus it, and you're going to look through the eyepiece, center up on that unique tree at the top of the radio tower, and then you're going to turn your red dot on, and this is easiest to do in either the morning or the evening before it's dark, before it's too light. And so you're going to look at that red dot, and you're going to move the red dot left and right, and up and down until yeah. that red dot is on top of the, we'll say we're using a radio tower, is on the top of the radio tower, yeah. where, which and is what's... And again, your eye yes. is going to be, you're going to be all the way down like this. Yeah, let's turn this sideways. Straight through. Let's turn this sideways so they see that distance you're going to look straight through that red dot like this, yeah. keeping both eyes open. we got a director talking in, Paul, in Scott's <laughs> ear, telling him what's out of position. Right. So... Right, so you're going to be you're going to be looking straight through the red dot, right. straight along with the tube. Some people think you're looking up here or looking over here. Okay, and see, but Scott's it is, moving it, so Scott's moved it, it off is, the tree. Right. So you got to put it back on the tree. Right. right. Okay, Scott, it's back on the tree again. All right, and then you adjust the red dot until until it's like on the right branch yeah. or at the top of the mountain or whatever it is that you're lining and, up on. And after you adjust it. Look in the eyepiece again to make sure you haven't moved the scope. And if you move the scope, just move it back to where it's centered and make keep a fine doing adjustment. that. Make the fine adjustment until the telescope and the red dot mm -hmm. are pointed at the same spot. Now, when you go out at night to do observing, you're ready to go. Go find the moon, right? Right. And we've got a moon map yeah, here. Yeah, we have a moon map. You can get moon maps like this yeah. and so, try to identify some craters, right, you know? Right. There's a little past first quarter moon. You can go out tonight if it's clear where you are and simply put the red dot finder on the moon and you're looking at the moon. If you want to go out and look at Jupiter, Jupiter is well placed at sunset and, and as it gets dark for great early evening viewing. You simply go out, put the red dot on Jupiter and now focus and you're looking at Jupiter. And you're looking at Jupiter. Now, uh, if you could grab me that uh, planisphere over there. Yes, Kent. sir. This is a blown up... <laughs> Uh, display model of our of our uh, planisphere, it. but uh, what you do, this is the actual size of it. What you do is you take the time that you're out observing, you put that time number right across from the date number. So, so the, what is the day? The December the first, second, December second. the second. Okay. So here's November. Here's the second right here. Right. And so I'm going to go out. Say so we're going to be nine viewing at... 9 o'clock at night. It gets dark early. We can be viewing by 6, Scott. Okay. Let's say 7. We're going to have supper and then go out viewing. And this shows you what the sky is going to look That's like. That's right. So this is, this is due north. So we're going to... Point. That's north. And it's designed to be held over your head. No, not this one. Yeah, because north, east is there. No, no. Okay, that, how do you do, use this you one? You use it. This is a double-sided no, planisphere. This is, this is only part of it, though. Right. Yeah. So this is the so this all is the northern, you do. This is the northern part right, of the sky. Right. Most right. planispheres you do hold over your head. Okay. Yeah. But 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 the point of it is, if you try and hold it like a normal map, east is over here. So you have to have it up facing north for it to work. That's where I'm going with it. Right. right. But yeah. just just enough so that this is about the same level of as the Polaris. North Star. Right. Right. Correct. So you don't. Right. You don't, a lot of, plan, again, a lot of planispheres, you're looking straight overhead. And getting the whole sky. Right, right, right. But, but that's this, not how this works, because you are going to see, um, uh, depending on which latitude line you're mm -hmm. using, because you can operate from zero degrees latitude all the way up to 60. That's right. Okay, so. But what's cool about this one is it's double-sided. That's right. So we have the north side, which is what, 
this is. Right. But we flip it over, and now we get the southern sky. That's right. So you can see the northern sky, and then the back side gives you what you're going to see in the southern part of the sky. That's right. It's a small, compact thing, but because we're not trying to get the whole sky in one circle, it's actually bigger, and it, it performs bigger than its size because right. it's got that north-south on the side of it. Right. So what else comes with this telescope? Okay. Um, so you have an extension tube. Which you're going to have to use. Yeah. And so let's talk about how to get that on. I'm going to take the eyepiece out. And now I'm going to take the tension collar off. The tension collar is how we attach stuff to the telescope by screwing the screws down. So I'm simply going to unscrew this. And you, by the way, you guys do get an eyepiece with the telescope. Yes. It's going to be a 25 millimeter plossal eyepiece, give you about a 50 degree apparent field of view. So I'm simply going to unscrew this, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So I'm going to turn it counterclockwise, anti-clockwise to get it off. There it comes off. And again, be very careful here. Don't force it because it's going to cross thread. Take your time and get it on there good. Yeah, if it's dirty, you got a piece of sand or something in there. Uh huh. You can get feel that it. out. You yeah, can you can. That. So get that. So get that on there good get and it tight. Out of the thread. And now we're going to put the tension collar back on by going clockwise. And here we go. So even to reach focus with almost any of the eyepieces, you're going to need this on. Right, the extension right. tube. Right. You're going to have to use it. And the reason tube. why we give you an extension tube is it used to be that astrophotography through the eyepiece was almost an impossibility mm -hmm. with a Dobsonian telescope. But because of the high response of cameras, especially astro cameras available today, you can be taking video of deep sky objects even. We have, we have people that do this. Amazing pictures. Right? And they take video and then they frame grab each section out of, the, out of the video and then they track and stack the image until they're starting to see nebula. So the way that you would do that is the camera's on there. You'll have your laptop setting over here. You'll get lined up on the uh, uh, nebula, like the Orion Nebula, for example. You'll focus it up. You'll see it live, okay? Uh, but it won't look as impressive as it will after you're done tracking and stacking, okay? But you're really not, you know, a lot of people think you have to have a go-to mount with motors. With drives and, with and all the rest of it. With but you can just keep putting the Orion Nebula at one edge of the field of view, let it drift across because, you know, you let go of the telescope, there's no vibration, yeah. and you frame grab those best shots. Yeah. So. so it also comes with a... Uh, Smartphone adapter, so you can put your smartphone on here, and this is real simple. We're going to use the, the 25 millimeter plossal, super plossal that comes with the telescope. We're simply going to put it down in there, just like that. I go down to about where the eye cup yeah, starts. Yeah, show where it's at. So see this eye cup, this rubber thing right here, right? I'm going to flip it out, and I'm going to simply put it down to about right there, and now I'm just going to tighten this set screw down. Uh, there we go, pointed about right there. I'm going to tighten this down really nice. And then, I don't have my smartphone with me, that's my microphone. Anyway, you're going to take your smartphone. Yeah, your smartphone, this is still in okay. a case for mine too, but you'll drop it down in there. Turn okay, your camera on. Over the lenses. Yep, you're, uh, can I turn your camera on? Here, I'll do it for yep. you. Take it out of the case. Oh, okay. It, it sticks better this out of the case. Oh, this leather case will not fit. Yeah, the leather case will not stick. So, this is just a bunch of like little octopus suction cups here. Okay, so here, here we put go. Put it down so they can see. So, I always do it not in the telescope. Okay, you do it. Because in the telescope, you're struggling with the telescope. Here, I'm just going to simply take that, uh, the, 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 that. I'm going to find it in the eyepiece, and I'm just... He's actually really doing it. You can't see this, but you won't be able to see it. He is, he is centering up the light beam coming through the eyepiece onto the camera itself. Yep. And now that it's there, I'm going to stick it down on there. And for belts and suspenders, we have a piece of. What does belts and suspenders mean? Well, your pants will hold up with a with a belt, and your pants will hold up with suspenders. But if you're worried about something <laughs> falling off, you wear a belt. And what else do you do? You wear suspenders. suspenders. So now, 
you can see the camera and we can make some fine adjustments here there we go and get the camera where it's lined up really well with the eyepiece that's now, a good tip actually now we can put this in here tighten down the screw and now you can put it on there and start yeah. taking pictures. You see the moon or something in there. And start and taking pictures. Yeah, you, you shoot video or you start taking pictures. Right. But uh, you can zoom in also on features on the mm -hmm. moon, like a crater, for mm -hmm. example. Yeah. And, and this so, is a great way to get started with your yeah, own smartphone. So you already have an astro camera probably at home, maybe more than one. We have a friend, Mike Wiesner, yeah. who does astounding astrophotography right. with a smartphone. Right. And it doesn't matter what brand, you know, which flavor, they all have really okay. good cameras. So what I'd like to do now, we, we've shown you how everything goes together, the possibilities of sliding the two back and forth, rotating the eyepiece, uh, making sure that you're putting on the extension onto your focuser, uh, different kinds of eyepieces that you can use. Uh, let's show the reflex sight. Yes. Okay, this is an optional item. So here it is. And this is really cool. So this has a heads-up display, and you're not going to be able to see it. But when you turn it on, it projects a series of three rings of uh, circles, three circles. The center one is half a degree, which is the diameter of the full moon. And then there's a two-degree circle and a four-degree circle. This is just for heads-up, easy pointing. It's like a souped up red dot, if you will. And these will fit right in here. In Let me make sure it's yep, screwed it's it. screw out. And this is the, the, the finder base we have has a stop screw on it. So if those screws come loose, it's not gonna fall out, right? So right. it won't fall out. But he's gonna tighten the screws down, and now we can do the same thing. Turn on the red dot, the so reflex sight. The reflex sight has a a knob that turns on, and you're, when you look through it again, you're going to be looking through it like so at the sky, and you're going to see circles with little dots on it, mm -hmm. and this thing's a dream to get lined up. You'll find something like the moon. I like to use the moon. The moon's always good because it's big, bright, easy to find. Easy yeah. to find. And you know what you're looking at. That's, that's right. You can also do it in the evening looking at a tree or a radio or something like that's that. That's right. And then you got three knobs here, okay, that make this also a breeze to adjust that whole circle up, down, left, and right until you get it all dialed in. And again, like Kent said, jump back and forth uh, between the finder and, the, and, your fi and your eyepiece until you know that you got everything all centered up. Because after you do that, then you use your maps, or you can just look, cruise around the yeah. Milky Way. You can look up and say, gee, what's that bright thing? Or look, there's a fuzzy patch up there. That's right. Put the fuzzy patch in the center of the, of the, of the reflex site. Right, and prepare and to have boom. your mind blown when you look through the eyepiece, okay? Right. Because you're going to see more stars. You're going to be seeing nebulosity or galaxies that are thousands of light years away or millions of light years right. away. It's so, a time machine. That's right. It's a, and with an 8-inch aperture... Now you're getting into serious class uh, uh, aperture that will show you breathtaking views of galaxies and nebula and comets. Of course, planets and the moon are still going to be awesome uh, through the telescope, but uh, it is a bigger instrument. Why 8 inch, Scott? Why not start with something smaller like a 4 inch? The 8 well, inch is a sweet spot for starters. Okay, well, let's just take what you can see, the power of what you can see through these telescopes. We showed. Uh, uh, a smaller telescope a couple of days ago, a 70 millimeter, and if you were to put the 70 millimeter on the moon and focus it up, you're going to see images of craters in the moon, uh, uh, craters and mountains razor sharp. Mm -hmm. But if I ask you to count craters for me, okay, you're going to be able to count dozens. No, probably 200, 200 300. If you're careful, okay. yeah. the sky's good. Okay, right. stable. Two or 300 craters. All right, you move to the 114, you know, 114 millimeter, four and a half inch telescope. Now you're getting upwards to 1,000, 2,000 okay. craters. 
This is without in increasing magnification. This okay, is using the same magnification. Same magnification right. through all these telescopes. Then you put this telescope on the moon. The same eyepiece. The same, same eyepiece. Same magnification okay. because the eyepiece will change uh, magnification on each telescope. But uh, you get the point. Same magnification. So the image looks the same size. But now you're starting to see thousands of craters. And the reason is? reason is is because with a bigger lens, okay, you see more resolving power, okay? So what you want with the telescopes, you want distance and you want detail. So we, we gave you an, uh, a view of uh, a description of what it's like to look at the moon. All right, now let's go to something that's faint, okay, far away, all right? Moon's only 225,000 miles away. Let's go to something that is over a thousand light years away. Let's go to something that's two and a half million light years away. Well, you away. could. That would be that would be kind of, for a lot of people. That's an extreme example. Yeah, but it's the Andromeda galaxy. It's the Andromeda galaxy, and uh, if you point this at the Andromeda galaxy and it's dark, and when I say it's dark, it doesn't look dark to you, but you look up at the sky and you can see the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. If you can see the Milky Way, you see would the Milky been, yeah. Way. Now you know it's dark. Okay. Uh, by the way, in this kind of dark environment, you're going to be using red lights only, okay? You're not going to be using any uh, white flashlights. You're, you don't want a neighbor's light on. Uh, these, all these things kind of ruin your night vision, all right? But you're dark adapted, and you which a, takes 20 or 30 minutes. Use a planet sphere. We're going out tonight, right? Yep. At 7 p.m. And Andromeda Galaxy. Yeah, that red oval right there is, right is right the there. Andromeda Galaxy. So you're going to be aimed up, actually, that tonight, kind of high up in the sky. Up here in the north. Right. If we're going north, you're going we'll to be up there. Have the telescope so focus so that, so that the stars look as small as they can, okay? A lot of people <laughs> think that as you increase magnification, the stars get bigger. They don't. They stay pinpoint, mm -hmm. okay? But galaxies and nebula don't. They, are, they have angular size. They're going, to, they're going to show up really well. And through this telescope, if I have my 70 millimeter, my 4.5 inch reflector, and I have this telescope all set up side by side, all looking at the Andromeda galaxy, what we're going to see through the 70 millimeters, you're going to see just the bright core. So it's going to look like a, not quite like a Q-tip. Kind of fuzzy Q-tip looking thing. But something a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. okay? You might think that you're seeing things, okay? But in fact, you're seeing the core of the Andromeda Galaxy 2.2 million light years away. Each light year 5.9 tri uh, trillion, trillion miles. miles. Trillion, not billion. So trillion. those photons that are coming into your telescope are one side of the galaxy is like 2.1 and the other end of the galaxy is 2.5. So 2.2, 2.3, some, somewhere. Okay. Those photons are over 2 million years old. Right. And they're coming down and landing in your eye. Yes. And the bigger aperture you get, just like a hose, the bigger hose you get, the more water comes out. Right. Well, the bigger aperture you get in a telescope, yeah. the more photons. It's a bigger go light funnel. In. Okay. Right. So it's like dilating your eyes, your little eyes, to that lenses size. to the size. Okay. Yeah. And so if you had eyes this big, uh, you could just look up at the sky and see galaxies and nebula without anything. Mm -hmm. But we don't, and right. that's how telescopes work. Uh, they are light gathering machines that gets you the distance. They are information gathering machines that gets you the detail. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and changing the eyepieces. Andromeda Galaxy changes. with the same eyepiece, mm -hmm. a 25 millimeter plus, which is standard with a right. lot of beginner telescopes. So, so we talked about what it's like in the yeah. 70. You do find right. it. It's it's a small little fuzzy thing in the middle. We look through the four and a half inch, and now you see something that's extended. Okay, and long. And so you want thank to you. not just look in the eyepiece and go, uh-huh, I saw it. Yeah. What you want to do is you want to relax. And the more relaxed you are, you're going to see more photons. Okay. And the longer you look, your brain learns to see what your eye is looking That's at. That's right. The longer you look, the more you're going to see. Right, so if, the, if it's a relaxing thing, maybe you have a little stool, maybe you have some relaxing music playing, okay, you have some hot coffee with you, okay, and you are out there having a great time, relaxing, looking several minutes at a time, okay, not several seconds, and then you start to see more and more detail. But through the four and a half inch telescope, you're going to see an extended uh, object, okay, it looks so, long and so wispy, wispy, really thin, smoky, smoky. Yeah. like 
like cigarette smoke or vape smoke now, right before it disappears, <laughs> that's what it's going to look like. That's sort of like. what it looks like, okay? But you're looking at ancient fossil light, okay? And you're looking deep into space. Uh, through an 8-inch telescope, you're going to start to see the arms, the spiral structure of the, uh, of the Andromeda galaxy. Yeah. And that is really a thrill, okay? Now, you're not going to see color. Uh, you may see a couple like a blue gray I see it as a blue gray or a gray green yeah I see it as a gray okay. green right. our eyes all see different colors in different ways mm -hmm. but it's sort of blue green or gray green or gray blue yep. something and but the, you're not going to see color pictures right like you see in on your social media feed because those pictures are taken with cameras and the cameras build up light over yeah, time. You're, you're, uh, most of us today doing astrophotography are tracking and stacking. And you get hours and hours and hours of photos. guys that do 100 hours Absolutely. of exposure. Absolutely. Our eyes can't do that, right. okay? But, but to see it live versus seeing a photograph of it is really got a, an emotional impact. It would be like, Kent, if you've never been to the Grand Canyon, and I, and I just show you some beautiful postcards, and I go, Scott. Kent, these are... Awesome pictures. You don't need to go to the Grand Canyon, I've, right? I've been to the Grand Canyon twice, and both times, fog could not <laughs> see the Grand Canyon. I still haven't seen the Grand Canyon. Okay, well, you could but, get clouded so, out in astronomy, yes, too, right? exactly. But so, so you're looking at this, and, and, and it's just, it's, it's like seeing a picture of Saturn. We've all seen pictures of Saturn, yes. right? Scott, I know you've experienced this, and I have. Somebody will look through our telescope at Saturn, and they'll cry. Or they won't believe it's real. We actually have had people go, there's a picture down in there. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, where's the slide? Where, yeah. Where is, you know, where's, where's, that at? where's Saturn but in literally, there? We'll literally, we'll, they'll start <sighs> hyperventilating, or they'll, have, they'll cry or, or have to go sit yeah, down. Yeah, it is emotional. It has an emotional impact on people, yeah. and I truly love that when that happens because you've changed with a telescope, You've changed somebody's life because there's a magic in seeing the rings of Saturn. There's yes. some magic in seeing a high-powered, in-focus with a big, nice telescope view of part of the moon, right? Simply yes. a section of the moon. That is an emotional reaction people have. It's fantastic. You right. can have that too right? with a telescope just like this yeah. right in front of you. And so you'll... As you start to learn constellations and as you start to learn where deep sky objects are, and you'll be able to do that with maps, if you're going out with a group of amateur astronomers, uh, you know, you can do that by finding uh, uh, astronomy clubs. Uh, you will, uh, you'll have a much greater, much deeper experience, and you'll meet some really fantastic people. I had a customer was on the phone with us this morning, mm -hmm. and we're, he's talking about what telescope to buy, and I said, man, you need to find an astronomy club somewhere around you. I said, you live here, right? He said, yes, and, and he lives on Long Island. And I, I'll just search astronomy clubs on Long Island. There's an astronomy club four miles from his house. There you go. And, he's, and they're and, everywhere. And they're I mean, everywhere. And, or, or, or put on your social media feed, hey, I've got a telescope. I live in, we're, we're in Springdale. I live in Springdale, Arkansas. Is there anybody out there that knows how to use telescopes? I'm looking for a mentor. Somebody is going to be out yeah. there and ready to step up That's right. and help you go on a journey to the stars. That's right. And you might think, well, that's a little awkward. I don't know this person, okay, or I don't know these people. Mm -hmm. And you might think, well, you know, how do I break the ice? How do I tell them that I'm a beginner and I want to get started? Look, they look for beginners, all right? Oh, yeah. And, and Unlike almost any other hobby that's out there, okay, I got into diving, I've been into photography and stuff like that. Divers are, they're kind of more close-knit. Surfers? Surfers. Because I know you surf. They're, they're a little territorial. Yes. Okay, they don't really want to give up their wave, okay, all right. Uh, but, you know, surfers who become friends, that's different, all right. But it takes a while to break the ice there. In amateur astronomy, they're going to break the ice right away. They really want... They really want to help you get started, and they're going to share all of their secrets. In photography, I notice that photographers, once they get good, they don't really they want don't to give up those secrets, right? They'll tell you something, but they're not going to tell some, you. Some. They some. won't tell you the secret sauce. Right, right? exactly. I'll right. tell you, there's magic. Once you figure out how to use your telescope, if you set up in your front yard, yep. 
people are going to stop. Gonna, or you, go to a street corner. Or go to a street corner downtown on the square when, on a Friday night and they're playing music. Mm -hmm. And the, moon, the moon's up or the planets are up. Set this beautiful first light 8-inch Dobsonian telescope yeah. down on the sidewalk. And don't say anything. Just set it up and put Jupiter it, in. Yeah, and, and you'll have dozens of people show up, and you may have two or three or four or 500 people show up absolutely. to look through your telescope. And during big events that might be going on in your town, thousands of people might yeah. want to look through yeah. your telescope. Yeah. Everybody who walks by is going to go, can I look through, what are you looking at? I'm looking at Saturn. Right. Can I look at Saturn? You sure can right here. Right. Yeah. It's an awesome. It's awesome. I love doing that. And we're going to talk more about that as we go along showing uh, some unboxing and other things that we um, will be showing on this uh, series uh, of our telescopes. But I, before we go and we talk about our uh, next telescope, mm -hmm. I do want to go through and show that video on how the Dobsonian base is built again. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because it was popped on everybody. Yeah. It's good for them to see that again. But let's see that one more time, Paul. So, you know, it's fast. This is going to be an experience you can do it, what, for me. Thirty minutes. Okay. I have never put one of these together before. Okay. So this is going to be a straight out of the box for me. I have looked at the directions. Yeah. Which I advise everybody to do. Sure. Before you try and tackle anything, look at the directions two or three times. Okay. So we're going to do that. Here Let's we go. Go ahead, Scott. You want to start pulling stuff out? Yeah. So we've got the altitude bearings here, right and left. And now we've got the components of the base. And packed right in here is a little pack with all the screws and stuff we're going to need. Right. And this looks like a lazy Susan, but this is actually the bottom plate. Well, it, it is a lazy Susan, Scott. <laughs> you can, well, not lazy because it's going to get a lot right. of work as you search for things also up in the sky. Also, this box right here that has um, the eyepiece, the finder scope, an extension tube, uh, a couple of IP other pieces. Eyepiece holder. Eyepiece holder, things like that yeah. we're going to need as well. Instruction manual and a warranty card. And when you buy this, you definitely want to read So, Scott, we're going to need tools for this. The tool is you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, a two millimeter hex or Allen wrench, and a crescent wrench, okay? Those are the tools that we're going to need to put this together. So, Scott, crack in to the directions. I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay. Back here behind us. So, we've identified that we have all the parts. Oh, yep, they screw in. Right. And that's what the Phillips head is for. How many astronomers does it take to put together a telescope? Oh, you could do it by yourself. <laughs> you could. And after you watch this video, you'll definitely be able to do it by yourself. That's right. And we're going to go ahead and put them all in. Yeah. On all the holes right now. So they, it looks like the Phillips head, there's like a Phillips head side to these things, okay? And they are going to be, ex they're going to be exposed. Because they're going to lock over these, um, these pieces that we have right. here. They lock everything together. And then... Oh, you, Carol, don't tip them too far. Those, the ones you put in there might fall out. So I see how you're doing this. So we're going to build it all out. Okay, first off. So let's lock these two in right now. Yep. Yeah. Set it down flat. Okay. I'm going to lock this one in a little bit. Okay, so now this one. There, there it goes. Go. See how I was just twisting them back and forth? I just kept twisting them until they locked down, right? Until they popped into place. Right. And now I'm going to tighten this one down. So, Scott, why don't you grab the other side? Which is over here. Which is over here. Okay. <laughs> and notice the curves go up. Yeah. Right? That's the key on what direction these things go, is the curves go up. There we go. There we go. I just held my tongue just right. Yep, there we and, go. There's, and notice we had it up so we could see it, but that wasn't the right way to go. So I'm going to slide But it was the right way to help it assemble. <laughs> yes. If you'll pick that up, I'll slide the base back in there. There we go. Okay. So now, we're going to line up all of these things. Okay, those are close. Here's the accessory tray. 
I'm going to put it on like this. Right. And it's real simple because it came with the two screws, right? Yep. So I got the screws. Okay. So it's going to go right there. I'm going to get them started by finger. I'm just going to keep screwing these in until it gets tight. But again, not going to over tighten. There's never any need to over tighten. There we go. And we've got it ready to go. Scott, this is going to be an experience for me. Hi, everybody. Because We're back. I have and never uh, put Scott's going to show before. you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we hope you enjoyed the 8 inch uh, Dobsodian. Uh, but when we come on next time, uh, we're going to show the uh, National Geographic 70 star app. And what I'm showing here on my, in my hand is my smartphone. It's loaded already with the star app function. Uh, we're going to go completely through this towards the end. But you just put it in its holder. It's Bluetooth connected. It will help you understand the sky in ways that Maybe as a beginner, I'm sure you don't understand all the constellations. I still don't know all the constellations in the yeah. sky. There's 88 of them, and you have to go to both hemispheres to see them all. But uh, this, um, this particular uh, device... Can we turn around and see if we can yeah, get Yeah, it's connecting right now. So it's, it tells you what you're pointing at in the sky, right, Scott? Yeah. How's that look? Is yeah, good? if you're moving it around a little bit, let's move it. You can see, you can see that the stars change, and you're seeing the constellations, and there is an encyclopedia of information in the Star app. So right. we'll come back with that on our next uh, program. So thank you. It's been fun. It's, I, been fun. it's been fun. It's been a wrap. I, I, I love an 8-inch Dobsonian telescope. That first light telescope. Uh, they just came back into stock. They're selling well. Uh, mm -hmm. An 8-inch Dobsonian is a great way to enter this hobby that you and I yep. have done for our lifetimes and we love. Right. right. So thanks very much. And uh, every, as always, keep looking up.